Okay. Uh, all right, we're recording. This is the IPFS All Hands call for Monday, November 20th, 2017. And we have 21 people on right now. And to begin with, our, do we, if you have any agenda items, we already have a couple. Go ahead and add them. Looks like we have oh, four demos. All right, so we might have to um, time box people's demos, but it's great to have so many demos happening this week. Uh, Oh, is there, if there's anybody new who wants to say hi, um, uh, do, is anyone interested in saying hi? If you uh, unmute your microphone and let me know. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead and say hi. Hello, my name is Stanislav. I come from Poland. Uh, I recently came up with this little project, which is called Merkle Share. It's a basic paste bin on IPFS. It works pretty well because it's very simple. Uh, it encrypts your data if you want it to. And it's got some basic functionality I'd like to share with you if you, if you, if you want to spare the time. Cool. Did you? Did, is that already listed in the demos, or is that another demo? Yeah, yeah. It's the fourth. Merkle share. Merkle share. Okay, great. Yeah, I think we'll have we'll be able to make time. We don't have a ton of ton of items. It'll be very demo. short, so it shouldn't be difficult. Great. And go ahead. Oh, you already have the link to the GitHub. Great. Perfect. Anyone else want to say hi? Any other? Anyone new or have not been around for a while? Uh, I'm happy to say hi. My name is Rico. I'm part of the query team with uh, Brendan, just in case uh, I'm a new face for anybody. Okay, welcome, Rico. All right, last chance for anyone to say hi who wants to say hi. You don't have to, but you're welcome to. Okay, all right, well then, let's jump into the agenda. Um, all right, so first item, oh, remember to, yeah, put your name on the on your agenda item so we know. Who, who's who? Looks like David uh, has some info about the Sprint Helper. Just add my name to the ones I, I added to the agenda. Uh, so just quick um, note on Sprint Helper. I just saw that Sprint Helper right now is posting the time as like 4 p.m. UTC. Um, which I think misled some people. I see like there's a comment here from Drozdiak, Drozdiak um, that thought that the OMS was one hour ago. And I'm not entirely sure how to upload Sprint Helper or where the code for it is. So if anyone knows um, or if anyone is already responsible for managing it, they could check uh, what is going on and if we need to do any Thing, any manual thing to update it. I can I can help with that. I know how to fix it. I, I fixed it last time. There was daylight savings. There's no maintainer for it, so it's just like <laughs> sitting there doing its thing. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it, yeah. And you like SSH in, and like you just change the value or something. It's, or? You just all you have to do is edit the value in the GitHub repo, and it because it's pulling from the GitHub repo when it pull, posts the info. So you just have to change the info it's pulling from. Oh, that's perfect. Okay, uh, that was easier than I expected. That's perfect. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You don't, right. I don't think you have to like redeploy anything or restart any bots or anything. It just keeps moving forward. Uh, all right, your next item: upcoming JSIPFS release. Exciting. Yeah. So I just opened the issue for the next release of JSIPFS. Uh, and as usual, I always create an, a very long issue with a lot of highlights. Probably there is even more than what I have already listed. So if I missed something, please do let me know. Uh, but also please do like check out the issue. There is performance improvements. There's like Windows support. There is uh, more tests coming, more features coming, a new streaming API, which I think a lot of people will love because they can now pick to use the streaming library that they love, if it's readable streams or full streams, or even not using a streaming library at all. So that was like a, um, a, huge pain point, a huge pain point for some of our users, and I do hope it's not anymore. There's like progress bar, like there's a bunch of stuff. Um, so yeah, uh, I invite everyone to git clone that repo, like check out master, uh, npm install, and npm link to any of your projects, and just like if you could run your uh, test suite against your project with the latest JSIPFS and tell me 
Uh, there is like a couple of breaking changes. Well, one is when the, the streaming API uh, that this is documented. Uh, the other one is with the pub sub message. We basically now just respect the product buff format, and it, it's a change from topic CID to topic ID. Um, it's also documented on the issue. But if you find more, like if you find more things that like are not working for you that were working with the previous release, please do let me know. Uh, we want to make sure that it is a smooth transition, that everyone understands what is changing, why it is changing, and, and that everyone has the full context. And, and yeah, so we are. Um, in order to really do the release, um, we have just like one PR left, which is going to add some interoperability tests for PubSub to uh, avoid um, having breaking changes in the future, uh, as we have for other things like BitSwap and so on. Uh, and once that PR lands, then we will do the normal cycle of just announcing on Reddit and on Twitter and like telling everyone on IRC saying, hey, like in two days, you're going to release this thing. If you find any problem, please tell us now. Otherwise, uh, we'll just like ship it. And, and then the whole world will have access to just a If there's any questions or any remarks, that was it. I have a question with the progress bars, any chance those progress bars would also make it possible to have a progress bar when you're using a pinning service? Uh, yeah, 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 so. Like, I is it pinned yet is something that I would love to have a progress bar for. So, yeah, yeah, it's something that is, like, so this progress bar is for IPFS files to add. But yes, like the, the same thing that's doing the progress bar for adding files should be also work for pinning. Um, uh, so it's not progress bar for transfers. Yeah, it's not progress bar for transfers. Um, it is. It works with just IPFS API, so you can use it against Go. It's the same thing that Go uses to give you the progress bar when you do an IPFS add. Um, and so we have now that in just IPFS. Uh, we haven't talked about adding that feature to pinning, but I don't see why not. Like it is something. And I, yeah, I've definitely saw or participated in a couple of conversations that people wanted to know um, if things were pinned or not. So we should consider it. Cool. Dimitri? Um, for, you said for transfers and for adding files through the API, there should be, uh, you should be getting progress support. Uh, but not for PNS, that would say. Yeah. Cool. Any other questions or things about the JSIPFS release? Uh, yeah, quick question. Um, we in in Go IPFS, we uh, just change or are planning to change that when you subscribe, the API first serves you an empty pub sub message to make the HTTP connection flush, and we're currently working on removing this again because the flushing now works properly without sending that stupid message and. Um, do you, yeah, just a heads up, maybe you need to like also do this in JS IPFS to keep my compatibility. So, yeah, I saw, uh, thank you for uh, tagging me on that issue. Uh, I saw the comments and to be honest, like I never knew that that was happening on Go IPFS. So I actually don't know why it worked flawlessly in just IPFS API with the same test, like we didn't make any change. So yeah, I, I need to, to test to see if there's actually any difference for the just IPFS API client. Um, my guess is that like, since you were sending just like a null message, it is trying to, to get the parameters like from message and so on. And like, since it doesn't have the properties there, it just like ignores it. So, so yeah, let, let me try to understand better why it was never a problem for us and and let me get back to you on that all right perfect thanks uh one more note on the pinning progress bar uh matt and everyone like so we have this repo interface ipfs core um it has the interface name on it because it's the interface that we create a spec for it and create tests to make sure that implementations are compliant with and so we have been using it to communicate like API changes or API upgrades. Um, it is a good way to get examples for how APIs work, but also it's a good way to propose new additions, right? So if you want a progress bar for the pinning service, and I, I can add that issue myself as well, now that I, I know it's important, but like anything else that comes to mind, uh, definitely open an issue there. Um, like 
if you know that someone is trying to do something and they cannot because it's missing something, definitely encourage them also to, to add that question uh, because it helps us a lot to understand how people are using these APIs for. Cool, thank you. And the next items you also to be uh, All right. sustainable. So yeah, um, I opened an issue on IPFS nodes and it is, it, it is just like a, a starting point from a starting point on GitHub that follows many conversations that we have amongst ourselves, either through Zoom calls or in person or through IRC. And also by like following what a lot of people in the JS community are now uh, working on. Uh, essentially, like the IPFS ecosystem is growing a lot. We have a lot of pieces, we have a lot of modules. Every single module has a readme, every single module has a test suite, uh, every single module has its own API. And the more the ecosystem grows, the harder it becomes to have the complete context of how that module fits with all the other pieces. And because most of that context is actually right now in maybe a couple, three, four people tops inside the IPFS community, it, it, we became extremely dependent on them. Like um, there is a lot of things that, for example, me uh, or Jeremy have to review in JS or Goland, and like if we don't review, like the things just don't get merged. And sometimes it doesn't have to be that way. If it's something that's like a completely breaking change, then like yes, we should be present, uh, or at least someone with the entire context should be present. But we should have the tools to enable people to add small features, small additions, fix documentation, and so on. And so that issue is basically collecting a lot of ideas from other open source projects. Uh, creating a, a place for us to discuss from our experience what are the biggest pain points and try to come up with a solution together with a framework where we can like create a standard of like this golden standard for our modules that will enable anyone to take responsibility over a piece of the puzzle that will enable anyone to like do a patch release do a minor release without uh, being afraid of like breaking everything um, and this way like the let's say the top level maintainers, the people that like hold the glue on their heads of all, all, all the pieces um, are pieced together, uh, just need to be present when the discussion really requires re-architecturing some large piece of the puzzle and not just maintaining uh, tiny pieces. Uh, there are things like semantic release, um, uh, things like just having 100% uh, coverage uh, te test coverage so that like you know every time someone submits a patch they just have to do a little bit of effort to make sure that everything still stays in place and that, that like their patch is not going to break the code somewhere else uh, there, there are things that we can do in CI uh, and like linting and, and so on some of the things we already do but they are not very explicit it's more okay we just had it because we felt but I, I feel like if we have this discussion, we can then convert that to something very useful that goes into the contributing guidelines uh, that everyone in the community can use um, to to help maintain all of these all of these modules that we create. So yeah, the issue is linked. Please go check it out. And, um, and yeah, let's try to start there. And then if we have to have a call about that, let's do it. If we have to have a breeding group or a working group, let's do it. Uh, but but yeah, this is very important. Cool, thank you. Any questions about that, anyone? Okay, next agenda items, Jeremy. Is it? Oh, um, one second. Uh, Which agenda item is this? Go IPFS 0413 release. Oh, yeah, okay. Thanks, Lars. Um, <laughs> yeah, so we released a Another um, IPFS release after 0412 because we discovered a couple uh, issues. In one issue was in the experimental data store thing we're trying out, uh, Badger, and that's been fixed. So you wouldn't have been affected by that unless you were trying that out. And the other was a issue um, where if you were pinning and you canceled the pin in some way, it could cause a hang in your daemon. And so we fixed that. Um, it was just two, those two changes, but we figured it was important enough to push out quickly. So update, let me know if anything is feeling weird and 
we'll keep moving. Thanks, Jeremy. It looks like my doorbell is ringing, so I'll run down. Uh, uh, Brandon, can you start with the query demo? And I'll be right back. Sure. Um, yeah, so, uh, oh, can everyone hear me okay? Yeah, okay, cool. Uh, yeah, so we're hoping to demo uh, something we've been working on for a uh, number of years now. Um, but uh, we, I work at Query, uh, as, along with uh, Rico and Casey, uh, who are both on this call. But uh, yeah, um, I'm going to share my screen really quick, and we'll talk through sort of what it is, and I'll hopefully keep it nice and light. If someone wants to interrupt me, if this is running long, let me know. But yeah, so we've been working for a long time on trying to do a better version of open data. Uh, and uh, a lot, while ago, I met um, Matt Zumwalt, and we got talking about uh, the distributed web, and it had a pretty deep impact on our whole thing. Um, and so we've, we've written a white paper sort of explaining how we're hoping to build a, um, we're using libp2p and IPFS pretty extensive, actually, exclusively to uh, do linked distributed data that uh, works like a database in place, but it's inside out, uh, meaning you can query it, uh, query the data in place based on whatever data format it is, uh, whether it be a CSV file or an Excel document or a TSV file. Uh, so uh, we're also very interested in having this be accessible and really uh, palatable to regular, normal people in the real world who don't have command line knowledge. And so we ship a uh, Electron app, um, which is this guy. And this thing, as it's running, is actually running an IPFS node under the hood. I have a, uh, a full thing. Uh, and as you can see, we have a, a number of um, options here. Basically, we have a list of data sets. These are all the data sets on my machine. This check effectively to this land means that it's pinned to an IPFS node locally. Um, we're running a P2P uh, peer connection, and I can actually see the number of peers. Casey is currently online. I can see her uh, data sets. This is her IPFS peer ID. Um, and we can, I can sort of go to here and say, hey, I want to look at this piece of data set that she has. It has no description or anything. And, and uh, if I need to, I can hit Add. Oh, and it didn't work. But when it works, it's great. Oh, it's because I already have this data set name taken. Anyways, uh, uh, from there, I can go over to actually querying from data. I can do select name appearances from comics. And so this is a comics data set I already have sort of running locally. And what this is going to do is this is actually going to go grab all of that data um, from, it's going to parse it, run it, and the output of this is also a data set, which is now a candidate for being on IPFS, I can then chart it really quickly. Cool. Most popular appearance was Bruce Wayne, Batman, uh, from this comic desk list. Um, and more importantly, we've uh, the white paper sort of goes into this in great detail, but every query, um, we go to great lengths to try and make sure that every single query uh, collides as much as possible where the hashes will match. So rerunning this query a second time actually does not uh, generate new data. We have checked, we check that query as it's been inputted, we resolve that to a hash, we put that hash on an IPFS and we check to see if that hash already exists and points to a data set. And if it does, then we can just stream you back the results. So if you can imagine if this was a calculation that took like 24 hours to do, well now we can just sort of stream an answer instead of running the calculation again. Um, we also can naturally collide along a number of other dimensions, including the structure of the data. Um, we also generate, you know, everything that you would expect from uh, a data set um, that is living in a hash-based world. We have histories of data sets. We can actually track every change over time. Um, we have an associative metadata model that you can see. And all of these things are actually just straight up IPFS um, objects living on the network. And so, uh, yeah, as we see, we just pack everything in. This is the actual raw data that we queried against. This is the data set definition. Um, this is it's called an abstract query, which is we've taken the query, all the semantic information about the query, we've worked it out, and then we've ordered the keys um, by alphabetically. And this, the hash of this object is intended to collide with anything else that shares this structure, which will then show interoperability between those data sets. Same thing with the query itself. We actually write, um, this is the uh, hash of the abstract query, which is the query written into a generalized form. And then this, we refer to a data set comics 
and this is the hash of that data set itself, and this was a syntax SQL query. Um, yeah, and so we've, uh, we're also pretty interested in like being able to make it easy to add and remove data to IPFS, so our addition system is pretty straightforward, if I can find the button, there we go. Um, you're really just dropping a CSV file in here, and we can infer the structure of that CSV file, chuck it on IPFS for you, and distribute it. Yeah, it's kind of the whirlwind tour of the whole thing, but I'd love to leave more time for questions if anybody has them. Uh, there's a whole bunch of uh, stuff that this sort of points to. We're really excited about IPLD. We're really excited about semantic chunking so that we can break up CSV files along uh, things, along proper rows, which would then open up the realm of distributed computation, distributed querying, um, which would be an exciting notion. Uh, but generally, I think that you know, in our time working at the data rescue movement and trying to understand what archives look like on the distributed web, we think that this permanent linked data structure is, or is a magnitude more interesting than anything else you'd see in the world of linked data. Uh, we're pretty obsessed with making it as frictionless as possible. Um, it's all completely open source. We've got a GitHub repo that is linked from that website. Uh, and that's kind of where we're at. Any questions? David, David. Yeah, so this is pretty cool. And you already like answered two of my questions uh, <laughs> just now. So thank you so much for the demo. Uh, and yes, yeah, super exciting. Like I saw that you are adding the, the query itself to an IPFS object. Mm -hmm. Does that mean that like any of those electron nodes can fetch the query from the network and like run it locally to prove that the, the transformation is the same? Absolutely. Not only that, we can you can use that for data set exchange. Uh, our version of the demo for some reason isn't working. I think it's a, it was a namespace collision, but yeah. yeah, you can actually, the whole point is to be able to search and get data from other peers without any um, interruption. And so we're using lib P2P for that, but uh, one, we basically just add one protocol layer on top of the IPFS set. That's cool. So ideally, you should be able to create a pipeline, right? So you have the, the original data set, like we, we kind of like use this transformations language in IPLD land. Like we have the, the query, which is a transformation and then it gives you a new data set. And this new data set doesn't even have to exist until you actually need like all the transformations to be applied. Yeah. Um, yeah, so. Normally that takes me like 20 minutes to get to that point. <laughs> but yeah, that's the hope is to be able to, as data changes underneath you, you, you sense a change to tip, automatically rerun a number of queries that are joining tables together. Um, and so you can sort of do, hey, you know, new stock market data came out and let's calculate the GDP of Africa. Um, and that's, that's sort of what we're hoping for. Awesome. Uh, yeah, I, I'm interested in knowing like what are the next steps? Like what is, is if anything is blocking you right now? Like if you need anything from IPLD land to be ready to be shipped in order for you to continue adding progress? Um, I mean, more than anything, we've just been working our butts off to try and get this thing to function <laughs> now and then uh, really hoping to turn around and, and do the IPLD integration and then work on, take a good look at chunkers, support a couple of new file formats. Um, that's really uh, what we're excited about. We have to, the biggest thing we really need to get into place into query is some sort of either DHT or CRDT will allow coordination of who has what data sets. That's the one thing that's critically missing right now. But, then repos can sort of locally figure out what hashes they have and they can share their hashes with each other, but we don't have a canonical list. Um, and that's something that we need to sort of sort through. Interesting. So you mean like an indexing system that like would enable you to just coordinate that very efficiently and very quickly? Exactly. Okay, okay. Um, but yeah, we're very much looking forward to sort of contributing in both directions if we can sort of help IPFS grow. Um, we've intentionally picked an Electron app because we're planning on running auto update, which will automatically keep everybody running the latest version of IPFS under the hood. Uh, and so we're hoping that as users grab this stuff and scale this thing, we can hopefully keep everybody running the latest versions of, of IPFS under the hood. Sweet. Uh, awesome. Yeah, like, super interested in like, uh, like seeing this develop and like helping you uh, succeed. And, and if you want to have more conversations about IPLD and now you can transform the CSV into something else and then how to use IPLD transformations or help, essentially help us figure out how to describe what an IPLD transformation is so that it's usable for your use case and like we can then expand it to other use cases. Uh, Right now, like we are in that step where we need more use cases for these things so that we mm. can figure out the language better. 
That'd be super exciting. My, my hope actually as the turnaround benefit to IPLD is to be able to run SQL queries on the IPLD graph itself, um, which I think we can actually do given the way that we've architected our side of the things. And we need, we need, we need to do a long deep dive on IPLD. I'm very much looking forward to it, but uh, yeah, super exciting. Yeah, cool. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Anybody else have any questions? That's it. Thank you very much. Thanks, Brendan. All right, we've got three more short demos, looks like. So let's go to Forrest next with IPFS metrics. Hey there, uh, I'm Forrest. I've been working on IPF metrics here for a couple weeks, and I just wanted to give a brief demo to show how to use them. I worked on this a little bit last week, so it'll be kind of brief. Um, but let's share my screen. Um, which one? Can you all see that okay? Um, it's actually yeah, yeah. kind of like can you, it makes it. Yeah, there you go. There we go. Yeah, empty desktop. Uh, okay. uh no, it should be my VM. Hmm. Uh, it's let's just see a here. big wave and a couple of icons. Uh, yes. Yeah. This this good now? Yeah. Yep. Three 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 terminal screens. Okay. Cool. Um. So this is a combination of using Docker Compose and then a binary route and go. So in the directory, there is Docker. You can start that with Docker Compose as I've already done up here. And then you can start it with IPF metric start. And this starts a daemon that you can communicate with uh, below here on this bottom terminal. You can uh, add different daemons you have running. So I already have my IPFS daemon running here. And I have a couple more running in interplanetary testbed from Y. So if I start this up, you can see that it's going to start writing the event metrics that come from an IPFS daemon to InfluxDB that we can then view in Grafana. So if we want, we can add a couple more down here. And right now, we just add them based on their, uh, their HTTP endpoint where you can get the event logs from. I'll add a couple so that we actually get some good data in here. So right now I've added four nodes to the collection and then you can list them and you can see what nodes you have. And you can also specify to add tags of your own to the event log. So in this case, I've auto added the node ID tag to all of the event logs that come from each node. So when you hop over here, you can view them in Grafana and I need to work on adding more event logs to make this a little bit more useful, but this is essentially a breakdown of the performance of different DHT calls and their durations. Uh, you can see down below here, it's a little bit tiny, but the node ID is added to each of the events and then we can look at these events in isolation if we want. Um, hasn't been running for a long time right now, so there's not gonna be a lot of data here, uh, but the goal is to eventually build these up and give us more metrics on the different systems in IPFS and what events are taking longer. And hopefully add some type of annotation to Grafana, which is where you can set a mark point on the graph and say point here is when the add command was ran. And then point here is when the add command finished. Um, and yeah, this is the daemon process running right here. If you want to remove nodes, you can do that using the remove command and you just specify what node you added and then you can list and see that they've been removed. Um, it's very crude right now. I plan on building this out a little bit more this week, but I am looking for suggestions on what could make this more useful for everyone. I know that IPFS cluster could maybe get some use out of this, seeing as there's a lot of nodes that they want to collect metrics on. Um, but yeah, I can leave this open for questions if anyone has any or suggestions on what can make this more useful. David has his hand up. Uh, uh, go you, for it. Like, if you want like, to stop sharing the screen so that you can see everyone, maybe it's easier. Yes, currently trying to figure out how to do that. There we it go. Should be a, yeah, exactly. This should be Perfect. Perfect. Cool. Uh, thank you for the demo and awesome progress. Um, I am interested to know if you, you are like designing um, that profiling tool as like very tied to go IPFS or if there is a plan to make it agnostic so that we can have those graphs being generated for the multiple implementations of IPFS that are. Um. The way it works right now is I just listen on the API endpoint, which is like slash API v0 tail log. So if JSIPFS uses that, then it should be able to work with that. Um, 
And I'm not completely sure this is the correct direction to go in. I think it's a, it's been easier to add and remove nodes. That was my goal is to make it just one or two commands so that you could spin up metrics and take them down without editing configuration files. Uh, Elk is another thing I've looked at, but that requires adding an IPFS node to the log stash, telling it to look at the endpoint, restarting log stash, and it's just a little bit more clunky, and I wanted to make this smooth. Uh, but yes, the plan is for this to work with all implementations of IPFS that use the same HTTP API. Uh, right now, we do have some of those endpoints, and indeed, like we already have some graphs being generated with the same code base that was being used for metrics for IPFS. So I think we can do okay. it. Uh, and yeah, like it will help me to know which logs I have to give you if you tell me like what QIPFS is doing. Like if, if you have any kind of like way of describing where you want the logs to happen, like before and after calls, et cetera, then I can give you the exact same logs so that you can measure. Uh, the other challenge there, or like probably a more different challenge is doing the same for browser nodes. So spawning Firefox nodes, Chrome nodes, Safari, and so on, and getting the same type of information. It's going to be different, right? Like we can always have a proxy so that you can still eat an HTTP point and get that information, but it should be different. Um, nevertheless, it will be very interesting to know as well. Okay. Uh, yeah, and I can talk to you more offline about what can make it easier to get those too. Yeah, it's cool. Forrest, where can people make suggestions of how this would be useful or what kind of metrics they want? Um, I've created a repo on IPFS slash IPFS metrics. So anything there, open up an issue. I can take a look at it there. I'll be working on it all this week. Or you can just ping me on Slack or IRC. It's Frist on IRC and Forrest Weston on Slack. I recommend also posting on uh, Discourse. Um, oh, sort of yes. so soliciting ideas from people who might be on there but not watching this call. Okay, yeah, absolutely. All right, any other questions for Forrest? Okay, the next demo is for Magic 6K. Do we have Magic This is, is that Lucas? Yeah, he's yeah, on the call. call. Oh, his mic is broken. Look at oh. oh. Sure, we want the demo, man. <laughs> of course. Yeah, go ahead, Santa stuff. Okay, so uh, here goes nothing. It's my first time presenting anything like this uh, on a on a call, but um, let's just see how it goes. Okay, um, uh, can you see my screen? Uh, yep. it, it shows a chat currently. Yep, Z Zoom group chat. Awesome. All right, so um, let's go to console. I will be presenting the demo of my uh, little Python project, which is an IPFS based uh, base bin. Uh, you can install it from pip. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, I want the user installation. All right. There. Uh, if you run Merkle share with Merge like that, like so, it will just tell you to um, run your IPFS daemon because right now the Python implementation of IPFS is not ready. Uh, but I hope it will change in the future. Uh, personally, I'm currently participating in uh, IPLD uh, DAG for Python. But yeah, uh, let's do some uploads and uh, show you how it works. So uh, the most simple uh, type of upload you can do is to just pipe it anything you like to, mer to merge. All right, I use the, you can see that I use the A option, which basically shows you any, um, any usable type of link, really. Uh, you got like a regular IPFS link, uh, an HTTP gateway link, uh, your local, local gateway link, 
Um, and then there's also the hash. Uh, so let's visit the, uh, the IPFS IO gateway. Oh, what do you know? It shows hello. <laughs> Okay, um, another thing, um, encryption. So if you want to encrypt something uh, so that no one can see it, you just uh, use the E flag. Uh, and then there's this uh, little piece of garbage <laughs> uh, appended to the link. Uh, it is a randomly generated key that uses Fernet encryption from the cryptography Python module. Um, what it does is it lets you uh, use merge to decrypt it uh, because the, the secret is present only in this link and not anywhere else, which gives you some safety to just, you know, grab a link and send it to a friend who also, who's also got a uh, Merkle share. Um, I've got a, there's also the use case where they don't have Merkle share or uh, all IPFS altogether, uh, but we're going to go to that in a moment. Okay. Here we see the decrypted content. Uh, if we try to, if we try to visit the link without um, without the um, the the key, uh, you will see just garbage like like this. And uh, that's what I had in mind. Uh, it also kind of breaks uh, IPFS's determinism of uh, hashes, but uh, on the other hand, it gives you the extra privacy of. Uh, uh, of your content not being uh, recognizable on the network. Um, okay. Now, what if uh, what if your uh, what if your what if your friend, let's say, they don't have uh, IPFS? Then you can use the um, GUI, I, the little web UI I, I wrote, uh, and still get the benefit of encryption without uh, having to force anyone to install anything at all. Uh, you just go uh, minus G. Uh, okay. So this is super secret stuff. Awesome. So yeah, uh, you get this link. The only difference here is that it's got this little web UI uh, call and prefix. It just lets uh, Merch know that this link is meant for G for the web UI and uh, not for the console so that it doesn't fail when trying to decrypt. I can, I can show you what it does when it receives such a link. Yeah, web UI download for command line is not supported yet. Oh, <laughs> a typo here, but okay, let's go. Uh, let's go see what uh, the GUI looks like. Okay, yeah, here it is. Um, well, there's not, not much here really, but um, Merkle share is not meant to to be complex really, and uh, it's meant to serve uh, ordinary people who just want to get the taste of the distributed web. So uh, I suppose it's, uh, uh, it's rational to, do, to have it built that way. Uh, there's an IPFS link and then uh, a little fork me on GitHub ribbon. And you can visit the IPFS website as seen here. Uh, you can copy to clipboard. It shows copied for two seconds. Then you can just go and paste it in. You can see that there's this, this is super secret stuff uh, written here. All right, uh, is there maybe anything else? Um, okay, yeah, all right, I cover that. So um, there's like maybe three um, plant features I've got. Uh, that is uh, built-in clipboard support so, so that uh, the link you choose uh, will get copied to the, copy to the clipboard. Uh, right away without using anything like xclip or opening with xdg open. It might just come in handy, I think. Um, then when the pure Python uh, IPFS implementation is ready, I would like to use it to support uh, Merkle share so that people don't have to run uh, the IPFS daemon. And uh, uh, also there's this little bug where I can, I am not able to uh, put non-UTF-8, non-unicode non content on uh, the web UI. Uh, I would tend to it in, in, in the future. I think it's like the highest priority for me right now. But uh, obviously, as if all things, you simply have to find the time to do those things. Um, okay, I think this concludes my little demo. Uh, if you've got any questions, I'd be happy to answer them.
That's really great, Stanislav. Thank you. Did anyone have any questions? I had I had one question. If you are not using the GUI feature when you add it, the content is so where your example was just the text hello. Uh, is it just adding that content or is it wrapping it in something that would allow it to dis be displayed using GUI? Oh yeah, so um, <laughs> when you visit my rep repository, um, I, I got this little motto which says like, you know, um, it's like it's a distributed uh, IPFS based bin which is similar to sprunge.us. Sprunge.us is a, um, it's like a paste bin that is accessible from curl and you know, uh, I really like to, wanted to mimic that in, in the way that you can basically pipe anything and uh, uh, once you like curl maybe the the gateway, you can receive the content uh, without any wrappers. I mean, uh, the web UI is completely optional, but um, if you want to just curl raw content, you need to either have Merkle Share installed or, uh, or resign from uh, using the encryption features. Cool, very cool. Thank you, that's awesome. <laughs> One thing you might I, wanna, I'm... oh, go on. Um, I just wanted to say that uh, this project is just re really simple and I'm not even too much into Python, but it's it's really encouraging to hear you guys be into it that much. <laughs> yeah, it's very cool. One thing you could think about doing next is uh, pinning so that, so that then uh, I can I can add something to to Merkle share and then pin it somewhere and close my laptop and it'll still be available for the people who I shared it with. Uh, yeah, that's a good point. I thought about maybe using a VPS for server for, um, you know, for holding the, for keeping the, uh, the files up, but you know, um, maybe just focusing on the encrypted upload so that uh, people can feel more safe about using it. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. If there are no other questions, we can do the, Lucas, did you get your your microphone working? Probably. Do you hear me? Yes, we okay. hear you. So, uh, should I start? Yes, please go for it. Okay, let me just start. I guess share screen. Okay, do you see this? Yep. Yeah. Okay, so. What it is, uh, it's IGES, our interplanetary Git service. And the goal is to have GitHub uh, without GitHub. Uh, currently, it can display IPLD Git trees and some more stuff. So you get, uh, you push this with uh, the Git IPLD remote helper, which I wrote earlier. I uh, and if you just put the commit hash up here, you get a repo, uh, which looks kind of familiar probably to some other service. Uh, and yeah, you get the tree, and you can you delete me? You can view file. <coughs> you can view files. Uh, it works. Uh, you can go into the trees and view another files deeper. Uh, yeah, uh, you can view commit lists. Uh, you can view more commits. You can view commits. It shows the diff of commit. And yeah, it, it works on JSIPFS using the DAC API, so it's IPLD. And uh, yeah, my long-term goal for this is to have some more like GitHub functionality like issues for requests and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, and that's pretty much it. Just a little GitHub like thing on JS IPFS and IPLD. Yay. That's pretty cool. Really cool. <laughs> Don't show us that one. <laughs> All right. The, uh, my question was are you? Reading so when you're you're browsing through the tree and showing diffs and things, are you 
running those directly against the Git repo or are you caching stuff into a database somewhere? Um, it's actually running on the raw Git data using IPLD, so there's no cache database anywhere. It's kind of painful for some things. I mean, like probably the hardest thing to implement is going to be Git blame, which I don't really imagine implementing as of now. Uh, yeah, but the rest is kind of kind of simple actually to do. So since the Git IPLD stuff includes the like sort of failover lookup of checking against GitHub, does that mean if I was using if I was using uh, IGIS, I could point it at a Git repo that is currently on GitHub, and I would be able to use all these features to browse through it, and it would just be using IPLD to resolve this stuff over IPFS and then failing over to GitHub. Lars is shaking his head. I'm not really sure what you meant here. So, um, so, so I think what Matt means is whether this can be used as an alternative uh, UI for GitHub. Um, and it's, it's its whole own thing. Like you push your, you use IPFS as a remote in your local Git uh, repo. You push stuff to it. And uh, what you get is a hash. And that's what you use this, this tool with. Sweet. Yeah, basically it. The goal is to have uh, to be able to collaborate on code without GitHub, without any centralized service. Nice. That's exciting. Yeah, um, very much. <laughs> it is indeed. Uh, I remember a project that Tim Caswell did like maybe five years ago before all our like, things like service workers or IPFS and many other things were around. And it was the full Git protocol implemented in JavaScript so that it could work as a Chrome application. And so you could have an editor and like edit code on the browser and like just push commits directly and so on. And so with this, like basically what you're saying is yes, now it's more than just like a Chrome app. Like you can actually have a Chrome, um, just a regular web page fetching data from GitHub through the HTTP link manipulate it, share it with your friends, maybe even like work on code collaboratively because you can have pop style and CRTs and like have the same editor for everyone. And then when you're ready, you just like push it back to somewhere. Can be IPFS, can be GitHub again, can be any other remote. Uh, this is super cool. Mm. I wonder if we should use it to push for having versioning natively supported in browsers, just as like a, as a native API method like add a version snapshot. To the web page? Yeah, so any JavaScript developer could just call that native function, like take a version snapshot, give it a hash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, I, I wonder if it plays nicely with the cache API. So now there is the cache API in browsers. It is accessible to service workers and, and like even the normal regular page. The, the window object and it it is very good at caching like requests like so it, it's very good at like just understanding that you're requesting the same thing and just giving you the response back so that the browser then like does the job of building the, the rest of the web page uh, and if we can make those caches be ipfs objects then then yeah then we can use the cache that a friend next to us has and just fetch it to our machine and all the web page. That's super powerful. Yeah. yeah. I have a I have a quite another question on the Git thing. Yeah. Um, when I when I push to the IPLD remote, do I get a new do I get a new IPLD hash or uh, like how does it work? Do I get a new IPLD hash every time I push? That's I or commit even. Is that my, that's my question. Yeah, that's currently the case. Uh, I'm working on a new remote helper, which will work on IPNS and will like give you the ability to have one hash through IPNS. And that will point to just the git hashes which change from IPLD. Nice, nice. Uh, but yeah, currently it, it does change. Okay. Because uh, I, I I'm also active in the SSB community, and they have like we have like a Git SSB, and it's GitHub, and we have distribution through the SSB stuff. But anyway, that's a different discussion. Uh, 
Uh, does it also change a hash if you uh, if you just push the same commits if not if the data didn't change? Uh, no, it doesn't. It's just that... uh, like git. The hash is actually the git uh, git hash in Kadetian. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Thank you. Wonderful. That's super exciting. Uh, I think that's the end of today's call. We've gotten through all these great demos. Thank you, everyone, for doing all this work. Um, does anyone need any final things to call out or questions or pronouncements? Uh, well, I just wanted to mention one small thing and uh, uh, more of a question, really. I wanted to ask, um, have you guys heard of Althea? Oh yeah. Um, so um, yeah, well, I think I will be getting in touch with the people who are implementing it, and uh, I'll try to, <laughs> I try to, um, I try to do it so that uh, IPFS support comes uh, to Althea as 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 soon as possible, and uh, I wanted just to give the shout a shout out to the project so that uh, maybe people, more people could get interested and help bring it uh, bring it up. <laughs> That's all, pretty much. Uh, Great. Add, gig. add the link to it in the one. in the notes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So exactly. That's what I want to do. Great. So, um, here's um a community, uh, and then let's and then a link to the whole thing. Uh, all right. It's basically like um a mesh network that is uh, meant to run on a eight hundred two point eleven. Uh, ad hoc networks so it's pretty nice because it uses ex existing infrastructure and pretty much nearly all dong all wi-fi dongles are capable of using ad hoc networks or forming ad hoc networks so yeah that, that's what i wanted to say awesome thank you yeah make sure to add those links into the the notes in the notepad so they'll get into the github repo because the once we close this window, the chat stuff from the chat gets thrown away. All right, I'm gonna paste it in. Thank you. All right, any any other final things that we should, can clear up for the day? All right, thank you everyone, and we'll thank see you. you online. Bye. 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 Have a great week, everyone. Adios. Bye, guys.